Okay, so we're here in South Wales with Lewis Perrin. He's got a flip to show us around. We're going to talk the numbers. Uh, we're going to just basically have a little property chat. This is his fifth deal that he's doing in South Wales, so let's have a look. There was, obviously, as you can probably see here, there was a big dividing wall here. So you can imagine when this wall was here, just how tiny this little front room was. Yeah. So the agent obviously recommended people loving open plan at the moment. So obviously, big massive steel in, big open plan room. It's just, it's just what the people want, right? Yeah. I don't understand why the head height and doors in Wales are so short, but there was a big, massive, like, um, like a steel here. So we didn't want to obviously mess around with that and take it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we just, we just left him. My builder's six foot nine, so he's had a right laugh <laughs> trying to get under this. So this is probably more for the, the shorter Welshman will probably prefer this because it's a little, bit, a little bit tight. And in the kitchen, all that was here before was literally like an old cast iron um, stove. Yeah, yeah. There was no units, nothing. It was just terrible. So obviously we just put just a bit of a freshen up in really. Yeah, yeah. Nothing crazy, obviously the spotlights everyone loves, so mm -hmm. just spotlights, everything fresh and clean, just kept it simple, because this is like the lower end of the market. Uh -huh. um, so we've not gone crazy. You said it was a set, this is the second time you've actually been here? Second time I've been here, yeah. Uh -huh. So I came here first time after I bought it, uh -huh. to have a look. Because like, I, I, this, like the last four I've bought, I've bought them without seeing them. Mm -hmm. I don't need to see them because of obviously technology these days. What I do is I get my builder to go around, record it whilst going around and pricing the refurb while he's there. Oh, yeah. So that way, like, I don't need to go see it and think, right, now I need to get the builder around to yeah, yeah. quote it so I can figure out what I can offer. Like, he can go do it for me. I outsource that. I can maybe even do it on FaceTime so I'm basically there. Mm -hmm. And then I get the build quote that day so I can literally offer immediately. As soon as he left the view, I can put an offer in before anyone's viewed. Like, it's That's just so... pretty much what we do. We, we only go there just to do stuff on social media. Like, yeah. Yes, like, well, that's, that's the point of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Like outsource, I'm as well leverage the technology that I've got available, plus I've got the team and I trust his opinion on it. It's yeah. so, like, I don't really need to be there. Yeah, yeah. Like I don't see what he sees on a build, like, I don't see the problem. So all I do is I look around and think, yeah, I kind of know what <laughs> needs to happen, but I don't really know yeah, yeah, like yeah. the level of detail that he does. It's yeah, yeah. so, like, I don't pretend to. So that's why I'd rather just outsource it. And obviously it's about three and a half hour drive for me. So I saved myself seven hours of driving <laughs> per yeah. viewing, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So it just makes sense. He literally lives just down the road. Why you chose South Wales as well? So the reason I chose South Wales is because a coaching client of mine um, had 10 buy refurbish refinance all money out deals in and around this area. Mm -hmm. So obviously I was like, look, it's obviously working really well, got a great strategy here. And then, you know, he said, well, look, come down and, you know, I'll show you around mine that. And then I thought, John, this is actually a great area too. There's enough for everyone. So that's why I've obviously just, just copying what works. Yeah, yeah. You know, obviously I've got an amazing connection with the, the letting agent. I've got a great builder that I've now found. So it's just like picking an area, find out if it works. When it does, then create the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what my position is, is I create teams. I don't really do property. I'm in the people business. Uh -huh. So like I pick areas, I create teams within those areas. Like, I think if you want to scale, you really have to be in the people business anyway. Like you can't just be a fucking like a builder and just know how to do refurbs. No, you can't. You can't. So the way I see it is, it's like I'm the conductor of the orchestra, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Everyone spent years learning their instrument. Like the builder's got his instrument, the letting agent, the values. Like they're all doing their thing. They spent years learning how to play that. Whereas I just have to bring everyone together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll find the builder, the investor, the deal. Like I bring the whole puzzle together. Yeah. So like that's why like I don't study like one thing. I, I do a bit of everything. And obviously it's work, working very well so far. Yeah. yeah right. it is. Should, should we go upstairs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, so this room along with next door was just one big open plan space. So obviously we wanted just to divide it to turn a two bed into a three bed, just because like since COVID people want either an office space or because COVID people are at home more probably have an extra child or a young child. So it's almost like adapting for that environment and having you know extra little rooms so people can even like set up an office here, you can have your desk here, or you can have a cot or something. So it just makes it more versatile to attract a wider range of market. And obviously that one room, the whole length of the building was massive. So when we took down the ceiling, there's actually like a, like a wooden beam that went across where the original wall was there. So it was originally a three bed and then they made it into a two bed and now we put it back to a three bed again. So I'll show you in the other rooms. Obviously that's the smallest room. This room's slightly bigger, but again, it's like, it's like a good size single, I'd yeah, so say. This, this room would have been just one, it would have just been two. All big. the way through, it's just one massive room. Yeah. So that's why we split it. Like I say, it creates an extra office or a kid's room, whatever. So it's just perfect. And then the bathroom was ridiculously wide. As I said before, the bathroom originally came all the way out to this line here. So like when there was a toilet one side and then the bath the other side, there's about a six and a half foot gap in the middle, of just wasted space. So he's like, why don't we make the bedroom bigger, turn this into the master bedroom, and then also just update the bathroom. I mean, I wouldn't say it was a small bathroom, 
but like it's just it does the job right it's, no, it's, it's, it's like it's just a very sensible size bathroom yeah, yeah. there was no need for it to be six foot further that way yeah. and literally just a massive gap just for no reason so um yeah we brought, brought the walls back obviously made this bedroom an extra what like three foot bigger so it just worked out really well so far so basically a lot of people that will be watching will be worried about property crash interest rates stuff like that so as they should yeah starting so <laughs> like? to consider because it could happen so what would you say is like your like idea about it at the moment so at the moment i do feel like the re a recession could be coming yeah only just because as I, we discussed before this it's like there's been a recession every up to 14 years since the 1700s yeah, yeah. so if you follow history it's likely to repeat yeah, yeah, yeah. so like that could happen obviously it's been 14 years since the last one so it's like mm, if you follow Basically, history we're over happened. we're overdue one right especially now what they're playing with interest rates and and the rate of inflation so you're like right something could happen so like to prepare for that obviously i want to make sure i've got multiple exits so that I'm covered. Mm -hmm. So at the moment, you know, I'm trying to secure like a really good price mortgage. Even though I plan to sell it, I just want to have that secured in case I need to use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I could obviously, you know, sell it, which I plan to do. But obviously I'm thinking, right, if the market's going to drop in four months time, if it does drop and then the buyer you pulls out, I'm cheap. stuck on a very, very mortgage getting killed. So I may yeah. as well secure that now, have a great rate, which gives me the certainty and then also put it on the market and then just hope that the buyer can complete quick enough. And when, so and when you're looking at deals, you you being more conservative with like the end values and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely. So what I'm saying to my coaching clients now is put in, put in for tomorrow's price, not today's price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So you're working the numbers based on, I would say, even up to 10% interest mm -hmm. at the moment. Because mm -hmm. if the number works for you at tomorrow's price, then there's nothing stopping yeah. you buying it today. So I would not be offering on today's price. Yeah. But like, you know, if the numbers work on the deal, you can buy in any market. Yeah. Right? There's, there's always a way to make it work. So i would be offering now, uh, yeah, a uh, much more conservative value and rate. I was talking about this to my mentor the other day and he was saying when he started in property, the interest rates were like the same as they are now for him. So and he's just held on to them and he's refinanced all the money out of them and then he's just bought more. And so if you're in it for the long game, it's not, it's not, unless you're like really over leveraged, not really gonna mess you up too bad. It won't mess you. And it's yeah. like, if you don't need to sell, like it's not gonna impact you. Mm -hmm. It's only when you're forced to sell Shit. during the crash that you're in trouble. Or there's another great saying I heard. It's like the market will always discipline the undisciplined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you've left yourself a tiny margin and you're on a variable mortgage and now the interest rate's gone up, that margin's wiped out. Now it's costing you every month. You're going to need to sell. Yeah, yeah. So if everyone's done that and everyone is selling at the same time, when there's mass sales going on in the market, it's going to reduce the price because there's not a people who can buy that many yeah, properties. More people in negative equity. And more people in negative equity. Yeah, so that's yeah. why there's going to be so many deals to be had for people who have been undisciplined. So like yeah. I saw this coming months ago. Yeah. I was pre preparing like a year ago. I was watching what's going on in America because it happens there first yeah, and yeah, filters yeah. over here. I was listening to like Patrick, Bet David and all that's that exactly kind of stuff. Started, Pat's yeah, the man. Yeah, yeah, Shout yeah. out Pat if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> so like, I was preparing for that. He was saying, look, this is going to happen. So I was like, okay, cool. He's telling me it's going to happen. I'm going to take action on this. So yeah. I was fixing all my mortgages, five years, um, all repayment mortgages fixed. Yeah. So like, I know exactly what I'm getting every month now for the next five years. Yeah. And they're all interest repayments. So my, my loan to value is going down. Oh, okay. So like I could have high leverage, but I want to pay that debt down yeah. because well, it's not actually coming out of my own cash, is it? So yeah, yeah. it just made sense to me. It was just like at the start when I left my job, it was high, high risk, I pull everything out, max yeah, cash yeah. flow to replace my income. But now I've done that. It's like right now I just want, you know, to, to make an income, but obviously pay that debt down. And I say probably prices double every 10 years anyway. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, we, we know quite like one of the biggest landlords in Hampshire. Uh, is it Hampshire? Yeah. Hampshire. And um, they're just, they've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, like thousands of properties. And then they're just, at the moment, they're just paying off all the banks. So they don't have to work for the banks anymore. Yeah, so that makes sense. But what's also enough. brilliant about doing that is like, if I use my tenants to pay down the debt, like when I refinance and pull that money out, it's tax free. Mm -hmm. like, that's yeah, that's yeah. the amazing thing. Debt is never taxed. So like, whereas people may earn a wage to get that 20 grand, they're gonna be flipping tax heavily on that. Whereas mm -hmm. if I refinance a property in 10 years and pull out 20 grand, I pay no tax. Mm -hmm. Obviously I have to pay the debt down, but like when you need capital and your loan to value is low, like you can access that for basically nothing. Yeah. What's, What's the number on this one? As well? So the numbers this one, purchase price was, what was it? I think I paid 55K purchase price. I spent, yeah, yeah we're filming mate. Come in, local celebrity. <laughs> Come here, what are you doing? <laughs> Don't be mic. shy. Don't be shy. Take the mic. Uh -huh. Take the mic. Yeah. He's my, my builder, <laughs> my midget builder. 
So, yeah, I paid 55. We spent 45 on it, and it should be worth, hopefully, in 130. No, we just up. told you in 40. 130. In 40, I bet, then. Well, Fred reckons we'll see. We'll see. It depends on the quality, don't it? That's what it's about. So, oh, well enjoyed. Naturally. Says so yeah. Says so it should be about twenty twenty five k in it. Obviously, it's fully investor funded, so I've not used a penny of my own money. So you know, I do need to, crazy enough. Yeah, yeah. I do need to pay them back too. So they they've been getting update videos, update pictures, like and, you know, I'm mean, sharing the lessons that I've learned from this. So yeah, we're week fourteen on an eight week build at the moment. <laughs> Whoa, don't even blame it. Right. It weren't his fault, right? But this is where, like, you know what I mean? Like, stuff comes up that you just can't expect. It's like, not your fault, to be honest. Oh, yeah, you should yeah, have known about this. Actually. This is why you look at your properties and not just buy them. Well, this is why I get Fred to look at the property, but he didn't notice the property has no gas. So this is also why, again, you know, problem with outsourcing and being three and a half hours away, you know, like, it, it would have been better if two pairs of eyes were on it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll take responsibility for that. So it's like... Yeah. There was no gas, we had to get the gas connected. Wales and West said, yep, take three days. So we put British <laughs> gas in, weeks. took British gas in to get it done. Then that obviously didn't happen because they weren't finished. And we had to try and get British gas back. And they said, oh, we can't come out for six weeks. So now we're already two months behind where we could have been and we should have been finished by then. Yeah, yeah, so you can just see how like things you just can't foresee and then the delays are created out of that. And now the next problem is, obviously we're now in week 14. Land Registry haven't registered this in my name yet, so the problem we've got now is how can I sell it when it's not registered in my name? Mm -hmm. Like if they're taking 10 months to register properties, and I was done, you know, month two, like you're just sitting, you're paying yeah, interest yeah, yeah. for eight months on saying that, I mean, it's done. Exactly. So now, now that's, that's going to be a problem for people who are doing flips at the moment, is because you can't do it quick enough, because you could do the refurb, but if Land Registry aren't doing that, then you need to find a way to expedite it or get it through quicker. Yeah, yeah. So now I'm trying to infiltrate Land Registry. So if anyone knows anyone works there, I have got a contact there. Listen, everyone's corrupt at a price. So <laughs> I mean, like, I'll, I'll chuck a few quid to get to get stuff through quickly. So it's just about you know just trying to find someone who can help us get stuff through quicker. So another thing that I get asked all the time is like, um, like on Instagram and stuff, they'll be like, how do I raise money? How do I find investors? Mm -hmm. and all I say is social media, document what you're doing, sort of thing. But they just kind of don't want to hear it. They don't really want to put themselves out there. So is there any other tips or is that just basically other Wait, tips what? other than social media yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the best one though right because yeah, yeah, like you have access to everyone it's ridiculous yeah. like, if you know a thousand people and those thousand people know a thousand people that means i'm two people away from a million people yeah, yeah. two people from a million so like if tell me if i've got a thousand people share my post and they want a thousand that's a million people reached yeah, yeah. like you can't get that access in a room yeah, yeah. If so like it's just event, yeah you might meet two people three people you might but like your YouTube channel, right? You could be getting views right now. People are getting to know you right now whilst yeah, you're here. Yeah, like yeah, how can, yeah. it's invaluable. So if you're not doing social media, there's only one reason you're not doing it. Pussy. It's because you're selfish. <laughs> the only reason you're not doing it is because you're selfish and you're worried about your like people's yeah, yeah, perception yeah. on you. How are people viewing me? What if they think this of me? Like it's only fear of that view on the self that actually stops you doing it. Yeah, yeah. Like that, Grant Cardone said that and it hurt, man. When he said, he's like, the only reason you're not out here is because you're selfish. I was like, <gasps> It's true, I'm selfish. worried about myself. If you're I am. poor, you're selfish. If, if you're poor, you're selfish. Yeah. I was like, shit, man, he goes hard. <laughs> yeah. But then when he like breaks it down, like, you know, you obviously, if you was not giving enough value to enough people, yeah. if you give a one pound of value to a million people, you have a million pound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I could get, but I went, the way he delivers it's quite sharp and, yeah, yeah. but yeah, for a reason, yeah, yeah, of course he does. Viral, it catches his attention, doesn't it? Yeah. It hooks you. Like that's what people need, right? Yeah, and like yeah. the reason I decided to put myself out there is because I was being selfish. I was too scared everyone would think different things about me. But once I got over that, I was like, no, I, I got a dream. I need to chase this. I don't care how you view me. I know my intentions are good. And I, I know I can help some people. Then it just like, it yeah. broke that barrier. Yeah. If okay. you're worried about getting hate, we get hate all the time. People like Grant Cardone, they, they wouldn't give two fucks about all the hate that they get. They he get loves it. He loves it. You got to get yourself some haters, man. You, yeah, you yeah, need yeah. haters, man. Well, actually, goes, I need people thinking about me. I need people <laughs> pushing me. Like the, the only reason, like we'll have videos that do well, and then we have videos that go absolutely viral. And the only reason they go viral is because people are hating on us, commenting and arguing in the comments, just just calling us dickheads and stuff. And then it makes it go viral. So they actually Do you know what, yeah? How do the algorithms work? If you interact with me, you're going to see more of me because of the algorithm. Yeah, yeah. So the more they interact and hate and post, the more you're going to show up and piss them off. Yeah, we've we like haters that literally just comment on all our videos saying that we're paying for ads so that they can see our videos. So it makes no yeah, sense. Yeah, we're like, no, it really, it's just them you, commenting. You keep seeing our videos because you keep engaging with it. Yeah, stop engaging. Yeah. Hey. They, 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 a hater works for you like an employee and they don't even pay them. Like, they're just fucking there all day.
like you couldn't even ask like your best friend off and you'd like my post like it's, yeah. it's like, true right yeah. it is true like you get a lot of support from people that aren't your family more than sometimes your family <laughs> yeah 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 but hating's just crazy like it's just no benefit what a waste of energy imagine they put that towards something. doing something yeah, good for themselves like yeah. it's just wasted energy so what's next for you then so at the moment we just I think two months ago purchased two massive Victorian offices for a million pounds and we got plans to convert to 46 studio HMO with a GDV of around 4 million and um, there's a massive plot in the garden we're going to put in planning for another 12 studios so it's going to be like a 60 unit site which will gross over 40k a month. So slightly different than a little flip in South Wales but yeah, yeah. Listen, that's Step because, as I said before, like, I create teams in areas. Yeah, that's yeah. how I can invest here. I've got probably in North Wales, Liverpool, Yorkshire, Derby. And I could be here with you guys whilst yeah, all those sites can be running yeah, because yeah, there's yeah. little teams in all those areas. Yeah, whereas, so I'm not restricted. But yeah, no, it's a big project and I'm excited, I'm scared, everything at the same time, you know. Sometimes so I wake yeah. up thinking, I'm committed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we'll come and film some of that. Yeah, definitely come up and see that one because that's that's serious. That's next level stuff. Yeah, yeah. So subscribe.